This happened back when I was 17, my last Halloween at home before going away to college. It was Halloween in our peaceful town where nothing bad ever happens. Our house is in the wealthier side of town, and while our house would be described as gorgeous by anyone not from the area, the real head turner is our next door neighbor's house. It sits on that line of being called just a huge house or a mansion. They always go crazy with their decorations for any holiday, specifically Halloween and Christmas. This one year was no exception. By October 1st, they already had all their crazy decorations out. Some houses go the cute and innocently spooky route, like with smiling ghosts and blow-up decorations. But our neighbors go the actual scary route, with the fake graves, fake bloody body bags, actually scary looking fake corpses, etc. It actually draws a lot of attention. People know to drive by and take videos, so it's never uncommon to see cars just sitting in front of their house in the middle of the street from time to time. I'll rename my neighbors' names to Mike and Donna just to not blow up their spots even more. Fast forward to Halloween day. It was luckily a Friday this year, so that meant parties and all that could be held on actual Halloween. My dog Bear sleeps downstairs in the corner of our dining room, and he woke me up really early morning like 4am when it was still pitch black outside. He was barking at something outside. I yelled across the house to shut up Bear, and my mom came out into the hall and did the same. Bear stopped barking after this, but I had no idea what he was barking at. I fell back asleep quickly after that, then woke up to my alarm like two hours later. So I started getting ready for school as my dad was leaving for work, and as he stepped out onto the front deck, he came back in and got mad at me and said, Damn it, Zach, clean up the dog shit. He thought I let our dog crap in the front of the house for some reason. I told him I definitely didn't, though. He was in a hurry, so he left without more arguing. Next up, it was my turn to leave for school, and as I left the house, I got a whiff of something kind of unpleasant. I now knew what my dad was talking about. I didn't see any dog crap anywhere, though. Later, when I got home around 2, I still smelled that smell. I had no idea what it was, but it was really starting to stink. My parents were both at work, and my parents wanted me to hand out candy when trick-or-treaters started coming. It wasn't until around 4 to 5 that they started coming. When I opened the door to the first few trick-or-treaters, I'd get a whiff of that increasingly horrible stink, and the kids and their parents clearly smelt it too because they were all commenting on it. One parent told me it was even worse next door. I started to know whenever to expect the doorbell to ring because I'd hear groups of people pointing out how horrible it smelt. At one point, I saw Mike and Donna in front of their house, looking around. So I went outside and went over to ask them if they smelt that too, but that was hardly a question because it got worse on their property. It clearly was coming from the front of their property, but there wasn't any dog crap or anything. The smell was coming from one of the body bag decorations, only it apparently wasn't a decoration. The couple had a number of fake body bags leaned on things like the mailbox and their front tree, but there was one just laying flat on the ground, and Mike said to Donna that he didn't put that one there when she asked. The smell was unbearable from this bag. Mike ran to grab a knife and cut the bag open, and what we saw made me sick. He of course cut the top of the bag open, revealing the rotting face of an actual human corpse inside the bag. We all put our hands over our mouths in disgust, wanting to throw up. And of course, there was an audience of kids and parents to see what was going on. It became a huge scene. Mike called the cops, and their whole front yard literally became a crime scene with people gathering from all over to watch, even though the cops kept telling everyone to clear out. The body was taken away. I told the police that my dog Bear was barking last night at like 4 a.m., and he may have been barking at whoever dumped the body there. Mike told my dad a week later that the body turned out to be a local 30-something-year-old guy who had taken his own life. As for who dropped the body there or why, that's unclear. Mike and Donna are very likable people, so we all think it was somebody who just looked at them as some rich, snobby household that overdoes it with the decorations for attention. Obviously, there are some sick people out there. I'm a single 24-year-old female living alone in my grandma's house. The house was basically left to me after she passed away because my mom didn't want to sell it and she also doesn't want to move out of her house. So I get to stay in my grandma's house alone. This was last year Halloween. My first one living in the house alone. I considered just leaving a bowl of candies on the stoop, but I figured that was not the best way to associate a friendly face to the house that I was new to living in. The day went pretty normally. Halloween was on a Sunday, so the trick-or-treaters started coming early on in the day, and it continued all day. Some people asked if my grandma was home, sadly unaware that she had passed away. I explained to those people that I'm her granddaughter, and that I live here now. My grandma was a very loved lady, so it was no shock to me how many people asked about her that day. 
Mostly everyone who knocked on the door was very friendly and normal. Later on that night, past 9 o'clock, when the trick-or-treaters had dwindled down almost completely, I heard a voice outside the front door say trick-or-treat. No knocking or ringing the doorbell. I was in the kitchen, so I definitely would have heard any knocking, but it did seem possible that he thought he pressed the doorbell but didn't. When I went out to greet him, I saw it was this average height guy in a purple suit and creepy plastic mask. I don't really know what the costume was supposed to be, but it was interesting I guess. When I opened the door, he said trick or treat again, but the strange thing was I could tell the guy was a bit older, like a full grown adult, and he was changing his voice to be a little higher pitched like he was trying to sound younger. It was strange. I assumed he may have had some issues, so whatever. I asked him what his costume was supposed to be, but he didn't answer. We just made eye contact through his mask. I took two pieces of candy and dropped it in his pillow sack he was holding, which looked completely empty. That was the part that weirded me out the most. He looked into the sack, then back at me. I said have a good night and closed the door. That was weird. He was the last trick-or-treater of the night. I wondered if he was accompanied by anybody watching over him, because I assumed he was special needs or something. He was clearly a 30-something year old man behind that mask. The rest of the candies I just left on the dining room table. Halloween was over. Or so I thought. The next night, around the same time as the previous night, I heard a loud trick-or-treat at the front door. That same creepy fake high-pitched voice. I had to have imagined it, I thought. But when I went to check through the peephole in the door, it was him again, in the same costume. And by the looks of it, he had an equally empty pillow sack as the night before. I didn't open the door, no shot in hell. A few minutes later, I heard him shout trick-or-treat again. I ignored it. In fact, I shut off the living room lights to basically say, Hey, get off my stoop, I'm not answering the door. I went upstairs to my room and shut the door and started watching TV in there instead. Out of sight, out of mind. Until I heard a pop at my window. Something was thrown at it, like a rock. I muted the volume on the TV, and a few seconds later, I heard the familiar trick or treat. I suddenly was in panic mode. Why was he doing this? I went to the window, lifted it up, and looked down. That man in the purple suit and mask was looking up at me. I threatened him with calling the police. In response, he very slowly lifted his empty looking pillow sack up and held it open. It seemed he was some asshole trying to scare me, but Halloween was over and I wasn't amused. I called 911 and police showed up in under 10 minutes. The guy was still outside. He refused to talk to them. So they put him in handcuffs and took his mask off. And as I figured, he was some creepy looking 30 something year old guy. They told me they were bringing him down to the station, but apparently they let him out within 48 hours because two nights later, he came back to my house, this time at the backyard door. He never knocked or rang the bell. He'd just stand outside with his empty sack and costume, creepily yelling trick or treat. I called the police again and told them he's back, and once again the police came and arrested him. I swear to God, a week later the man had returned once again, throwing a rock in my window. This time when I called 911, he seemed to actually disappear before the police had gotten there. But regardless, it seemed the police didn't really care to do anything. Either that or they couldn't. Luckily, I think the man lost interest because he hasn't returned since then. At least as far as I know, unless he's been hiding in my bushes watching me, which is disturbing to imagine. Halloween is coming up, and I'm kind of nervous he's gonna come back. I was 10 years old in 5th grade. I was planning on going trick-or-treating with my friend Jordan. We already knew the route we were going to take. It was the first year that we were being allowed to trick-or-treat alone. My mom gave us big bags for candy. It was a weekend night, so we could luckily stay out later. We did some day trick-or-treating, and after about 2 hours, we went back to my house and took a break. My parents ordered Chinese food for dinner. Jordan stayed for dinner, then around like 7 or 8, we went back out for some night trick-or-treating. My parents wanted us to stay close. We obviously said yes to that, but we kind of strayed off a different, further away route that we knew less kids would go down. Everything was going as normal. Less houses would open their doors after dark, we noticed though. But there were still some kids out trick-or-treating since it was the weekend. One house we got to, we rang the bell and within like 10 seconds, as if he were waiting by the door, a man opened up. Looking back, he was a bald man, looked like he was 45, and had a small gap between his two front teeth that we noticed when he smiled as he opened the door. He was overly friendly from the start, complimenting our costumes, trying to ask us where we're from, 
and just being overly conversational. We just wanted candy. He eventually said he has the candy inside if we want to come in for a second. Followed with, he wanted to show us this cool Halloween decoration he had inside. He described it as some talking skeleton trapped in a cage begging to be let out. Jordan and I weren't comfortable going inside this man's house though, obviously. When we said that in not so many words, he said he understood, and asked if we wanted to come in real quick just to pick out the candies that we wanted. We said it's fine, he could just give us whatever. He tried to insist one more time, and we said no. And he said no worries, and went inside to grab us some random candies. They were these chewy candies wrapped in see-through wrappers. We thanked him and left. As we walked away from his front door, we noticed he didn't close the door. He just watched us as we left. We walked away from his house down the sidewalk, and after another glance back, we now noticed he was walking in front of his house slowly with his hands on his hips. We considered running away, but there were other people down the block, so nothing would happen most likely. We just skipped the next house and went to the house two doors down. A woman answered, and we told her about the creepy man two doors down. She said she didn't know him at all, but that we should tell our parents when we get home. We ran into these two kids going in the direction of the creepy man's house, and we stopped them and warned them not to go there, and their reactions said it all. They already went to his house too, and had the same exact thing happen to them. They looked to be our age as well. We asked what candy he gave them, and it turned out to be the same candies. They already threw theirs away, so we dug into our bags, found them, and threw them away as well. If anybody would be sus enough to lace candies, it would be a guy like that. We wondered what exactly that man was trying to do if we were to have actually entered his house. Like, was he actually just innocently trying to show us something, or did he have other intentions? Our question was answered the next day, because that man ended up on the news for attempting to lure kids into his house, claiming he had a new puppy. It seemed his story changed for different kids, possibly based on their ages. Thank God it sounded like everyone was smart enough to not enter the man's house.